Let's talk about loops versus vectorization. Loops in R are notoriously slow. Because of that, when possible, we should prefer vectorized operations over loops. What exactly is a vectorized operation? Well, a vectorized operation is one that uses a fast, pre-compiled function to apply an operation to all elements of a vector, matrix, list, etc., without using a loop. So essentially, a vectorized operation is one that can perform the same actions as a loop, but doesn't have to use the loop itself. So here is a trivial example demonstrating the speed and power of vectorization over loops. Let's say we want to compute the cumulative sum of a set of numeric values. The cumulative sum of a vector of numeric values is the sum of each value and all the previous values in the vector. So for example, the cumulative sum of the vector 1, 2, and 4 is going to be 1 because we're just adding the value 1 and there are no previous values. And then 3, which is 2 plus 1. And then the last element of the cumulative sum is going to be 7, which is 4 plus 2 plus 1. We're now going to create a function, cumsum underscore loop, to compute the cumulative sum of a numeric vector. Let's talk about our approach. So we start off by naming our function cumsum underscore loop. We assign it to be a function, and it's going to take a numeric vector x. We're then going to create a vector called results that we're going to use to store the cumulative sums in. The length of that vector should be the same as the length of x. So we use the numeric function to create an empty numeric vector with length equal to length of x. And so what this is going to do is it's going to create a vector of zeros that are the same length as the length of x. In order to compute my cumulative sum, I need to iterate over each of the values in x. So I'm going to start my for loop using the iterator i at 1, and I'm going to iterate over 1, 2, all the way up to the length of x. If the iterator is equal to 1, notice here that I use equals equals because I am comparing i to the value 1 as opposed to assigning it the value 1. Assuming i is equal to 1, then the first value of the cumulative sum is simply the first value of x because there's no previous values in x to add the current value to. If the iterator equals 1, then the value of the cumulative sum for that index is simply the current value of x. For any other value of i, I want to take the current value of x at iterator i and add that to all of the previous values of x. The good news is the cumulative sum of all of the previous values of x, 1 through i minus 1, are stored in results i minus 1 because that's where we're storing our cumulative sum. So we take the previous value of the cumulative sum for the first i minus 1 values of x, which is stored in results i minus 1, and we add that to the current value of x, x of i. And we take that sum and we put it in results of i, which is the value of the cumulative sum for the first i values in x. So we're going to repeat this process for i equal 1 all the way up to the length of x. And so we iterate through our entire loop. And then after we complete our loop, we can then return the vector of cumulative sums that is stored in results to complete our computation. So let's run that to get it into R's memory. And now let's apply that function to the vector 1, 2, and 4. When we do that, we get 1, 3, and 7, which is exactly what we expect based on our previous discussion above. What's wrong with that function? Nothing really, except that it's probably slow compared to the equivalent vectorized version of the calculation. So specifically, there is a cumsum function already built into R that is vectorized. So it relies on fast, pre-compiled code. And if we use that function in instead of our cumsum underscore loop function, then we can get the same result, but even faster than before. So we're going to run cumsum of the vector 1, 2, and 4 once again. And we can see that we get the exact same results. So what should we do in order to compare the speed of our cumsum underscore loop function to the cumsum function 
already built into R. Well, we can use the micro benchmark function in the micro benchmark package. And essentially what this function does is it takes other functions that you want to evaluate, and then it will run each of those functions a certain number of times that you can specify. The default is 100, and it saves the timings for each one of the function calls. And then we can summarize our results, or we can plot our results to see which function is faster than another. And this is really useful if you're trying to optimize code and you're trying to figure out how can you make your function faster or how much faster will my function be if I take a certain approach. So what we're going to do here is we're going to load the micro benchmark package. Then we're going to create a random vector of a thousand values. And then I call the micro benchmark function. And inside that function, I'm going to call cumsum underscore loop of X. And so it's going to compute the cumulative sum for the values of X that we previously generated. And I'm also going to call the cumsum function and also supply it the argument X. And so basically we're, we're doing the same calculations here for the same vector, but using the two different functions. And so each of these functions is going to be run 100 times. The timings for those runs are going to be saved. And then we store those results in cumsum underscore timings. And there's a summary function, which we're not going to look at that kind of summarizes the results. But instead, we're going to look at a plot of the timings. And so this is going to create parallel box plots of the times for each of the different functions that we're calling. So we run that and we look at our results. And if we compare the timings of cum sum of x to cum sum underscore loop of x, we can see that the cum sum function is substantially faster than cum sum underscore loop. And while these results might be trivial because at least in our case, both functions ran really, really fast, where it makes a difference is when you run the same function hundreds, thousands, or even millions of times. And so especially if you're going to release an R package that others might use, it's a good idea to try to develop efficient, fast code to save people time. So the takeaway for you is that if you have the option to use a fast pre-compiled function in R, there's a good chance that that is going to be a much better solution than coding the same function yourself using your own approach, simply because it's not likely to be nearly as fast.